Hey everyone, the following tutorial is going to show you how to use tables in Dreamweaver to create a website, lay out a website I should say. Um, but before I do that, the first thing I want to say is A, generally I wouldn't recommend using tables to lay out a website. I would recommend CSS div tags for a number of reasons. Um, HTML5 also has some new tags that allow you to lay out a page, but I still use div tags regardless of the new HTML format. Um, for some different reasons that I'll get into in a different video. Um, having said that, tables are great for beginners to learn to lay out a page. The reason we don't use tables is two reasons. Um, so we don't use them because A, the code can get a little messy, especially as you create a big site, it's kind of tough to see what's going on where. And B, Google search engine like the spider, the web crawler that indexes your page and gives you a ranking, doesn't like them as much. It's harder for them to sort through your code. So if you're not that concerned about your Google ranking, um, a table's just as acceptable as a div tag um, to use when creating a page. Um, and it's a really great way for a beginner to start to learn the basics of web layout and design, you know, if they're not as focused on the coding to start. You know, I think it's a really easy way for them to kind of figure it out because div tags can get confusing when you're first starting to use them. Um, so the first thing you need to do when you're going to lay out a page with tables is figure out, you know, how many rows and columns do I want my page to be? So I kind of have to plan a page out before I start it. Um, I usually do this through paper prototyping where I draw some pictures on a paper and decide kind of what my page is going to look like. Once I do that, I begin to grid the page out in the tables and into a rows and columns. You can see my website right now. If I were to count row, row, row. I count the rows, I count the columns. One, you know, mid two, this one has a bunch of columns in it. So, but I count all these, I count how many rows and columns is this page gonna be? Once I've done that, I create my page. The basic web page, you know, it has probably a header, body, it's usually a three by three. Header, body, footer, divided by a left and right column with a body in the middle basic web page. So I'm going to go to insert table. See, I have three rows, one column. Let's do three by three. Right now it's 400 pixels. You know what? Let's just keep it like that to make it easy so that you can see it on the screen. Okay. There we have our table. Very simple. Now, first thing you can do is look down here and you can see my code that has popped up. So when I say the code gets confusing, to create a table, you create the table code, you have TD the body, but then the rows and column, the problem is the code is all the same. TR, TD, 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 TR, that's table row, column, 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 row, row, column, column. When they, you have a large table, it gets confusing where you are. So CSS and the new HTML5 allow you to know where you are in the page a little better. That's really their big advantage. Um, there are some other advantages as well, too, but that's a little out of the scope of this video. Okay, so I have this. Now, how do I make a web page? I mean, if I save this right now, save and preview, we're simply going to have a page that looks like this doesn't look like a layout. So how do I actually lay out a page when I'm doing this? Okay, let me show you. So first of all, I have a header. So this is where I would want like my main image or something like that. So I might say like my main image goes here, you know, and I, I might uh, start to extend the size of the table, which I can do by simply dragging the mouse. I can also extend the size by going down here into my table properties. Make sure you're in table properties. Look, if you look down on the page, you can see body properties, table properties. If your properties window isn't open, it window properties. I'm going to click back on my table, get to my table properties, change the width. I can change it to whatever I want. There, I've made it 800 pixels. You know, you have to determine the size of your website. Usually 1024 by 768 is a good size. Um, but with, you know, 4K monitors out now, we're, sizes are bigger than even 1080. So we're talking about, you know, 3000 something. 
All right, so I've made my page. I've just made this 800 pixels to make it very simple and nice. All right, I'd say main image goes here, but you can see I have these three columns. I don't want that. I'm just going to simply select all three of these. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to table, merge cells. So I selected all three, right clicked, went to table, merge cells. And now look, my main image goes here and I'm just going to fill this in with some nonsense to make it very simple for you guys. So this is where my main image would go. Next, I could have my links on the left, a footer, and you know some pictures or something on the right. So like my main body would go here. You can see how the tables are kind of moving around my text. It's one of the disadvantages of tables. You have to really play around with the size to get it right. And you can see I can select on a table and I can actually move it's not even it's not letting me move because it has to be as long as this but i can move it this way so you have to kind of play around with it how long do you want each row and column so all my links could go here i could have some images here on the side and i could say like you know thanks for viewing. Obviously, this isn't the type of content you would want on the web page, but you can see how I'm starting to lay out a page as I fill my content in. Let's take a look at the page at this point. Here it is. My page is starting to be laid out. All right. Next. Okay, let me go back to my table properties. To do that, I'm select, I'm in my table here. I go down here at the bottom and I just click table. Table properties. All right. So right now we can see the border of the page. If I click border zero, there's no more border here. So I'm gonna save that and show you what it looks like. All of a sudden I don't have a border. The more and more I play around with this, the closer I can start to getting it to actually looking like this. Just involves work and me sitting here and playing around with it and getting it to the right size and everything. Okay, let's go back into my table properties. There are more things that I can change. I can change the alignment of the table. I can put the table in the center of the screen. So that way when someone goes and looks at it, now it's in the center of the screen. It's becoming more and more looking like a, obviously ignoring my content, it's looking more and more like a web page. There are even more things that I can do to it. Go back to my table properties. I'll just show you one more thing. First of all, each one of these call of these like cells here, I should call it call it. Let me select one. There we go. In the TD, the actual. So you can see I selected down here TD, which is just this cell. You can see how this code starts to get confusing. Okay, I have the cell selected. I can actually right click. And I can start to change the, I can split the cell in two. I can insert another row or column in here. I can change just the format of just this cell if I want to. I can change the horizontal vertical alignment. I can say center, middle, well, it is in the middle. I can say bottom. I could say top. Notice I'm doing that, my TD is selected, but I'm in my page properties doing that. So I can change the alignment of each one of these cells. I can also change the space of these. So let me show you that. I'm going to select my table. I can change my cell padding and spacing. So I'll change that to like five. Change that to five. You can see how these grew in here. Let me add, let me go back and just add another border. And I can make that border huge if I want to. Now let's take a look. The idea is the more you play around with it, the more you get it to look like your site. 
and I just added in some content here, but you know, you could add in images by just simply selecting in here and going to insert image. You can insert anything as you could regular HTML. There's no difference. And you just play around with it and get it to look like what you want it to look like. You can enter in returns to make it look larger. And the more you play around with this, the more you're going to start to see some problems with it. But it can start to look like a web page, and you can actually do a lot with tables to design your page. Thank you.